So this is a 2004 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. Uh, it's the straight six four liter and it had the option of the air conditioning. And that compressor pulley you can see, uh, I poked it right here, this. You can hear the bearings grinding. And if you look at some of my other videos, you can see that I've driven through the ocean, which I think might have some direct effect or not on that performance. Uh, getting salt water inside of bearings and in your engine bay is probably a bad idea. Hindsight is 2020. So I'm going to try and attempt to remove the exterior portion here. This little thing here is the clutch on the front end of it. Um, that pins this pulley onto the drive shaft of the compressor. And there's a little magnetic release uh, that's done by an actuator. It's just inside behind the actual pulley. And I'm going to remove the pulley, the uh, clutch and I'm gonna try and replace the bearing inside of the pulley and that alone to see if I can uh, fix this. In the meantime, because of the grinding, I actually looked at this, which is the belt roading um, on the engine here, or on the front of the uh, heater core. And it shows the two different options without AC. It has this shorter pulley that goes around there, or with AC, it loops around and goes there. So I actually just bought the same belt, but shorter, um, to just delete the AC in the meantime. So this hasn't had AC for, I think, now almost a year, uh, which hasn't really been a problem, but now that we're getting into about 93 to 95 degrees on an average daily temperature here, um, it's gonna be nice to have the air conditioning back. And since the system itself, the compressor is fully charged, the AC has had no leaks since um, owning it, I don't really wanna to have to pull everything apart nor do I wanna to have to deal with the cost of doing all of that. So I'm gonna see if I can just fix the front end of it and I will first remove, just to make the space, um, and just so you know, if you're ever having to work on any of your bolts or anything like that, you have your fan blades aren't evenly spaced. There's actually one section that has a wider opening so that you can access pulley bolts and things like that, which is really handy so you don't have to remove the fan or the fan clutch. First, though, obviously, you want your engine to be cool. I'm going to pull off the overflow hose, and there's a little button on the back of the overflow tank for your radiator. I think I called it your heater core before, but it's actually called your radiator. And this whole assembly, if I can push that and film at the same time, pops right out, which will give us a lot more space in this project. And as you can see, that grants you an enormous amount more room to stick an arm down in here to try and hold this still while undoing, I believe it's an 11 millimeter bolt, but I'll find out shortly. Um, and then there's a uh, spring clip that holds the pulley itself on. So you have to take the bolt off, slide the clutch off, then a pin clip, then slide the pulley. The pulley's gonna be the hardest part because you can't pry it off, otherwise you'll damage the shaft's integrity to keep it sealed in the compressor. So it's actually gonna be a, a little bit of tricky work here. And I'll, I'll slowly splice all these together and explain what I'm doing and how I've hopefully fixed it. So I tried one of these, the uh, bark lamps, and I had to take the little rubber ends off because it kept sliding and didn't get enough traction on there. A little big and uncomfortable, but luckily had, which is the perfect size. So if you're doing this, I recommend getting one of these, a three-inch C-clamp. And these, this actually worked really well. Uh, it is actually a 10 millimeter socket. I would recommend if you're doing anything with sockets with little tiny stuff like this, try for a six-sided. Um, anything more, you could slip and then strip the nut itself. So this was actually really easy to come off. The threads are tight, but not extremely tight. I would probably say it's around like 30 or 40 um, pounds per square inch. So all I had to do was put this short ratchet on there, no breaker bar or anything, tighten the C-clamp onto it, and then just spin them in opposite directions using the handle that was remaining of the C-clamp and the handle of the ratchet. And I was able to spin off this, which is the clutch assembly. And when you pull this off, you have to be careful because inside it there are little washer spacers. You can't really see them that well. I'm using my phone camera, so it's not the best, but and I'm in the shade because I, in 90 degree weather, don't want to have to do this in the sun. So you can see the little washers inside there. Those are the spacers that allow it to be the proper distance from the pulley as it's free spinning. Um, and then when it's engaged, it magnetically pulls it tight against it. So you can see the mating surface. This is what pins against 
the actual pulley in there. And the pulley will have, which I now have to get in there to see, a C clamp or a um, spring clip on there. And you can see it around there. Um, and I have to pull that spring clip off before I can slide the pulley out. And that's the next step. So I've got a spring clip puller, which was I think $3.50 at Harbor Freight. So this is a pretty simple, cheap job. So, so far you need a 10 millimeter socket, a uh, three inch C clamp, which is a great vice tool because this doesn't actually have any places to pin hold um, or hold still the actual clutch assembly. So I'll uh, start back up when I've removed that C clamp and started to slide the pulley off. end, the splined end that the clutch goes on, you can see the pulley itself spins freely, when the clutch engages it sticks itself to the pulley which then spins the spline which engages the compressor. So this is the pulley off and this is the spring clip that was on the front of the shaft. This actually didn't work with the tool from Harbor Freight because the pins, the end of it, were too large and I had to file them down and ended up having to use a screwdriver to pry it off. Um, but because of its shape, it was pretty easy to pry off with a screwdriver compared to a spring clip remover. And now I'm just going to pound out the bearing assembly and bring it to Har uh, Advanced Auto Parts or Napa and have them look up the number and order a new one and then replace it and I'm going to use a, um, a C-clamp that's wide enough to compress it back in don't use a hammer or anything you can break them but this is the number on the outside if you can read it I'll put it in the comments as to what it was and how much the part was it is worth noting that when you pound it out, there is this little, I think it's like a dust shield of some sort to keep the bearing from getting crap inside it. Um, and that goes on the top side with the flange facing out. And you can see there's a little groove around the top edge there. And there isn't on the bottom, it just rolls on the bottom. And that faces up like this, so if it pops out while you're pounding that out, um, then that's how it goes back in. And then to replace the bearing, it has to come in through the bottom and obviously as tight as it was coming out it's going to be that hard going in so obviously clean it up really good make sure there's no debris in there use some brake clean or some PB blaster and then really clean it thoroughly um, as well as I used which is pretty helpful to know a giant socket which I've somehow misplaced probably shot it across the room somewhere um, but I used a giant socket basically I think it was like a 32 millimeter um, and a block of wood on the top of the socket and I used the flat side of the socket to press against this so I had more surface area on the actual um, assembly of the bearings usually people will take the socket and make it face down which I wouldn't recommend because you break it apart usually they'll take the open side of it and push it against the metal which you can separate the bearing at that place at that point and if you break this inner ring out and the bearing ball, ball bearings fall out then this inner or this piece that's pressed against the inside here will be extremely difficult to get out. So what I do is I flip it over, obviously not this size, and press the whole thing against it, and then use a block of wood on top of it with a five pound, or with that thing, a three pound mallet, and that did the trick pretty easily. With a couple of good swings, it separated it. The socket was on the floor, and it is a one and one quarter. And that side, I just pushed against the socket here, I mean the bearing assembly here, and then block of wood and then beat on the top of it. That's how you press it out. And that's it. So this is the broken piece that will just have to be replaced. And then press a new one in there after it's cleaned, and then reverse reassembly. So back at the air conditioning clutch assembly and pulley, and I need to replace the bearing which is this little guy, which is shot. You can tell it doesn't spin. I went on eBay and they had it. It was the only place that I could find these very exact bearing numbers. And that is the replacement for it. If you buy a replacement, which I'll put the link for where I got this one on eBay, make sure you take yours out first because I do not think they changed a lot between the Wranglers from year to year in their air conditioning. But I do know 
that the 97s through 2003 are one type of Wrangler TJ, and then 2003 through 2006 are a different TJ Wrangler. They have a different power steering gearbox, they have a couple of different uh, things that they changed about them, like the lock mechanisms within the door are reversed, um, the way that they flip, um, so I don't know if they changed the equipment manufacturer for the air conditioning, um, so that could change the output shaft. When I took this out, this actually slid off with the bearing very easily, so I didn't have to pry it. But make sure if you're pulling your pulley off of the actual compressor, it doesn't have a huge amount of resistance. And if it does, use a pull tool and or try and just tap it gently with a rubber mallet. If you yank that rod out of the end of the condenser too hard, it will break the seal internally and you will lose all of your coolant. So now that these are, I put them next to each other and measured them up. I mean, I didn't use any calipers or any specialty tools, but you can kind of see that they're the exact same size. So I would just put them side by side to make sure they're the same height, stack them on one another to make sure that the holes in the center are exactly the same and that the exterior diameter is also the same. And if those are all true, then it's the same fit. So I did buy this, which was the clip pin removal tool kit from uh, Harbor Freight. It was, I think, $10 and you use a 20% off coupon, so like eight bucks. The problem with it is the pins that it assumed you're using are this width. So they're very thick compared to, where did I set that little thing? This is the pin clip. That's the hole that that has to go in. As you can see, it's about twice the width. So I'm actually in the process currently of taking these down with a Dremel file tool that I keep at the end of my venture. Um, so I'll just be grinding those down so that they fit. I would recommend buying the proper one instead of this set, but if you only have the 10 bucks, I'm sure I can get this to work. And you can kind of squeeze a clip back on without the tool a lot easier than you can take it off. I actually didn't take it off with that. I used a screwdriver and as you can see, there's a little bit of a bend to that. So I have to flatten this back out a little bit before I pop it back in. I did clean these down with brake clean. I'm not gonna do anything too wild, just enough to clean them and careful when you flip that over again, there are little spacer washers in there. That is the 10 millimeter. And this is the assembly for the pulley that needs the new blue bearing set pushed into it. And as you can see, there are little teeth around the outside edge that they've indented. And those actually press out just a little bit. And I think that gives the resistance for um, holding the bearing a little bit more in place. But again, don't forget this piece here, the top bezel edge faces outward and it goes in there. I did make myself a little jig for my little C-clamp that I'm gonna wind it back in there with. I'm gonna attempt this and then I'll uh, stitch these videos together and see if it worked. Well, this didn't seem to work. So I kind of had to pound it in with a rubber mallet, nice and gentle. I made sure I was keeping it level so that I didn't break any of the bearing assembly going in. It's still fine, but I pushed it in pretty far and pretty hard and I popped this little bezel out and it doesn't want to go back in. So I'm going to see if I can live without this little dust shield. And since this is kind of a, a redneck rebuild, we'll see how it works. And I'm going on the El Cheapo, so this is a $24 rebuild in parts and maybe 10 bucks in tools. So hopefully this will work and I'm going to uh, install it right now and see what happens. So this is the three inch C-clamp as the basically channel locks because I don't have any on there and I just tighten that down and you can hear a silent bearing now. And I first put it in um, and tightened this down and I was spinning the, the actual crankshaft of the uh, compressor and that was because I didn't pound the bearing in quite far enough. It was about a millimeter too shy of the resting point. So make sure that this spins freely and this is not engaged when it's just sitting idle otherwise it will be constantly on and I'm sure that will cause problems with the compressor or the condenser rather and now I'm going to remove the shortened pulley and I mean uh, belt rather and attach the longer belt to that pulley and start it up and see how it goes and now that the coolant overflow is back 